Hello everyone, got a pretty cool video for you today. Um, a few weeks ago I received this in the mail, this is just the uh, product packaging, but uh, it's called the Sonar Phone from Vexilar. Um, I signed up on a giveaway on Facebook and was lucky enough to get selected. Um, basically what this is, is this is a smartphone based sonar for your smartphone or tablet, as you can see there. Uh, it's a really cool idea. Basically, it allows one person to have the tea box mounted on their boat, which is this guy. This is a uh, basically a little Wi-Fi hub that hooks into a transducer, which I don't have connected yet. But, uh, and basically, what that will allow you to do is to use Wi-Fi and connect to to the tea box here and see what's under my boat or what I'm seeing from the transducer that's mounted on my boat. So everybody can kind of get in on the fun. Okay, before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to go ahead and uh, introduce this guy to everybody. This is Paul J. Michelle. He works for Navionics. And this is who I signed up with to get this really awesome little box here. I um, just want to give him a shout out and say thank you. I'm looking forward to, to trying this out and you know seeing how it works. Um, so basically... What we're going to go ahead and do is, I'm going to show you how this works a little bit. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to go to the App Store. Now I'm going to put in Sonar Phone. Okay, there we are. Sonar Phone by Vexilar. So we're going to go ahead and push that. I've already downloaded it once, so this will be nice and quickly downloaded, hopefully. Alright, so now we're going to open it. Well, actually, before we open it, Gotta go to settings and okay, so there's the T box. Alright. I was getting a little impatient. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to that. Um and it looks like we're connected. All right? Yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and launch this app and well you said I don't have the transducer hooked up, so it's Probably not going to work, but we'll give it a shot anyway. What's up, Spider-Man? All right, so here's the, um, the interface. Oh, losing my... Yeah, we're definitely not going to be using this for navigation. Thank you. And uh, let's see what happens with Connect now. Okay, since I don't have the transducer up here, I'll go ahead and show you what you'll be looking at while you're out on the water. It's my iPod here on Wi-Fi, like I said earlier. This is the demo mode, so basically this is what you're going to be seeing out on the water. And again, you don't have to have this unit mounted on your boat to be able to see this. Um, here's a little bit of the stats. Um, yeah, like I said, no cell service needed. It's all Wi-Fi multiple receivers um, really neat unit looking forward to uh, trying it out tomorrow now I already have one fish finder set up that's this guy here got him this this year really worked out great for me no complaints whatsoever um, but I use a transducer arm setup with this and that's not really the best idea when you're going in the river you know it can get smashed it can get broken so what I decided to do was to go ahead and leave the mounting setup for the, the Lowrance as it was and incorporate the T-Box so that I can have both of these units running off the same power source at the same time if I want or if I'm going to the river and I don't want to expose my transducer to all the rocks and heartache that's bound to happen then I can use the T-Box with the internally mounted transducer as I'm going to do with this and everything's protected okay everybody we're going to try to wrap this up here we're going to get into the electrical portion you will see in this picture, this is a typical uh, trailer wiring harness. It's uh, four wires with um, a male and female plug at each end. This is what's going to deliver our power to our multiple units from a single power supply, or battery in this case.
In the lower portion of the diagram, you will see the battery. Um, we, the red represents the positive lead. The black represents the negative lead. As you will see, there's a fuse interrupting the positive circuit. I actually have an inline fuse on both of my fish finding units as a form of protection. The way I look at it is fuses are a lot cheaper than a new unit. So after the fuses, the positive circuit continues and is split between the green and the brown. The green delivers the positive signal to the T-box. The brown delivers the positive signal to the Lowrance unit. You will now back to the battery. You will see the black or the negative, neutral, whatever you want to call it. It's the minus sign. <laughs> anyway, that goes to the white wire. Now, I have this split between the two. I don't know if this will be a problem, but so far it has not been a problem. I'll leave that to the electricians out there. If it does prove to be a problem, we always have our yellow wire that is not used right now, so we still have a fail-safe. Let's move on to the T-Box wire harness. As you will see in this picture, we have a red and black wire that is terminated with a ring terminal. We're going to need to go ahead and cut these ring terminals off and pull back some of the insulation so that we can get these wires soldered into our new wire harness. In this picture you will see that I have cut the trailer wiring harness in half. Basically what I did is I left about 12 or 15 inches for my battery lead end and then cut it, trim back the insulation on the three wires that I'll be using I kept the yellow wire, we just bended it out of the way just in case we have a problem with our common uh, negative supply. In this picture you will see the blue cable, that is my lead coming from my battery. Uh, the red wire, which is your positive, is going into the brown and green wires of the four-way hitch connector and the black wire coming from the battery is going to the common white wire that I'm using. This is everything all soldered up. Uh, it's not in its final stage because it's not been waterproofed yet, but I wanted to leave it open so that everybody could see what's going on here. At the bottom right of the picture you will see the four-way hitch connector coming in, the brown and green wires leading into the heat shrink, and you have a red and a reddish pink wire coming out of the heat shrink. That is the power circuit for the T-box. The bottom middle section is the wire harness for my Lowrance unit and the fuse is inside of that heat shrink all nice and tucked away and waterproofed and that's pretty much it. Um, oh yeah, and the, uh, the small plug in the middle of the screen with the red and black wire coming out of it, that's the actual power supply I believe it's an eighth inch jack. That's what plugs into the T-Box and gives it its juice. Okay, now real quickly on to the actual mounting of the T-Box. As you can see in this first shot here, I have attached the T-Box to the foam support structure of my Jackson Cuda. This is below deck of the boat, so the T-Box is dry, out of the way, and it's not going to get damaged. Uh, if you look in the second shot here, you will get a little bit closer up shot. You can see this foam support runs basically from where my seat is back to the stern of the boat. Um, it's a perfect place to put it, I think. You're not uh, putting any holes in the hull of your boat, and it's definitely secured and safe. Now, you also see the transducer wire runs along the bottom of this foam support structure towards the stern of the boat where I have mounted the transducer using a wet through hull installation. Basically, the transducer sits in a small pool of water, which in this case I found is required to, to work. The transducer would not work when I originally tried to mount it in marine goop, and I also tried the electrician's putty with no, with no results. I ended up dipping the transducer into a bucket of water and it turned right on so I went with the wet through haul application. This can be found on YouTube. Just Google it and you'll, you'll see what needs to be done. I don't want to go into all that. I've bored you guys enough.
and I definitely thank you for sticking with me. I hate the sound of my voice, and I'm sure you probably do by now as well. I wish you all good luck and tight lines.